Hello and welcome to the fourth video in my NanoDrop build. In this video, I'm going to go through all the things I've done to get the electronics into where I need them to be. Now, I'm not going to go through the iNav setup in this video. The next two videos in this series actually uh, belong in here for the NanoDrack build series. I'll put a link down below. And there's also a iNav for beginners 2020 series uh, because uh, I've had lots of requests for that. I've used this as kind of a teaching moment. So the next two videos go into the iNav setup in quite a bit of detail. But when you get to that video, you'll see that all the electronics that we looked at last time, again, links to everything that I've got in here, plus a couple of extra little changes are all in the description as well. So we have a 40 ounce speed controller. We have the motor mounted at the back. VTX is on one side, receiver and also we have the GPS in there as well. Servos are in position. Um, I know I'll get questions about this. I've put the servos in exactly the same position as I did for my mini drag that flies beautifully. You could actually put them at an angle to put them exactly in line. But to be honest, the amount of throw that you need on these control surfaces is so small. You need about eight to 10 millimeters on something like this. Uh, the control surface is huge. Uh, you get a lot of responsiveness. So having it like this, uh, isn't particularly tricky. So let me go on to the bench, kind of go through my thoughts of where I was thinking of putting everything because the thought process is the same whether or not you're doing something like this or building some other thing that you're going to put iNav in with GPS and other bits and pieces. So here's the model with the flight control in the middle. Now I've installed the servos out in the wing, as I just explained in the introduction part. Um, I'm going to upgrade these linkages. These are just the ones from the spares bin. They're nowhere near good enough for a really expensive model like this, but the cables are nice and long, so I shouldn't have to do anything for that. Now I obviously have the little catches that allow me to get into these side pots. So there's quite a bit of room in here for me to fit in both the flight controller, the receiver, the ESC, the GPS, the video transmitter and other pieces as well. But what I want to do is I want to keep the flight controller as far forward as I possibly can. Uh, these things in particular are really sensitive to where the center of gravity is. So I want all the heavy stuff as much as I can near the front. So I'm going to need to find a place ideally to put the receiver and also the ESC. Uh, this is what it looked like and then I cut off the side or the, the covering to get into it to replace the cables. And I'm not sure if you can see it here, but the ferrous material around this little thing here uh, actually fell off. It was broken. So mine have been damaged in transit. So I can't use this ESC, unfortunately. I wouldn't trust it. So what I've had to do, I've had to find another decent quality ESC. Again, 40 amps. This time I've gone for a T-motor version. I'll put a link below if you want to use exactly the same thing. Now it's a similar size. It's a pretty beefy thing, um, but it will kind of fit by the side of the flight controller. And again, if I push it forwards, I can keep it as close to the center of gravity as possible. Now we're gonna to have to remove the heat shrink again, and I'm probably gonna put my own individual cables on it. We'll do that in a minute, but it should fit. Now the GPS needs to go in one of the side pods. Again, at the front, it could go either side, to be honest, only four wires on this that's going to need connecting. Um, it could be on the left or the right hand side, doesn't really matter. And all I'm doing here is I'm just putting all the different pieces in to just mock it up before I start snipping wires or heat up the soldering iron. Now, the thing that I need to put in the other pod then is gonna be the video transmitter. The video transmitter, ideally I want it as far away from the GPS and the radio receiver as possible. And then in the nose, we're going to need to put the camera so this is one of my favorite cameras, a Runcam hybrid. I'm gonna to have to cut a slot for the camera to fit and then kind of mount the board somehow behind it. Now I'm probably gonna end up gonna cutting a recess um, because I don't want the battery to be slamming into that PCB for the camera in the event of a tricky landing. 
So let me show you some images of how it's all going together. So here's a close up of the F722 with the 40 amp speed controller by the side. You can see here that with a little bit of uh, clever cabling, that ESC can fit a lot further forward. GPS potentially could go in this position. It doesn't matter, either side would do. It may end up being decided actually by the cable that goes from my antenna into my video transmitter. The receiver could go at the back. I don't really want it there. I don't want it, uh, potentially any of the antennas to be too close to the prop. Uh, so maybe when it was landing in grass, the antennas got swept backwards and potentially the props catch it. Um, and obviously then we've got the camera at the front. Motor is one of the few things I can't move. It's gonna to have to be in this position. The motor could be mounted a little bit further forward, but this is where it's going to fit and give me enough distance between the prop and the back of the model. So to modify the ESC, uh, took off the wrap and started to snip the wires. So put shorter leads on, nice silicon flexible wire of the right size for the ESC, leaving the outputs and doing it in a way that's going to make it a little bit easier to fit. Putting some heat shrink over the top of that and replacing the label makes it look nice and neat. Next job then is to prep the 722 flight controller, solder all the power pads so we're ready to put those wires on, solder the leads from the battery onto that position for the inputs. That's going to have to go through the wall into the battery bay in the model. And then with a bit of careful measuring, cut the cables off for the ESC so it will fit alongside without lots of excess cables. So when that's all done, hopefully you can see here that it fits really neatly into that space. Now, looking at this, I think we're going to need to have to put the video transmitter in the left hand bay as I'm looking at from the nose and put the GPS in that other location. That means then that the receiver is probably going to go in behind the GPS as well and I'll have the antennas sticking out the bottom. So now I've got a better idea where everything's going to sit, I can start putting everything together. Now the antenna I'm using on this model is the brand new Menace RC Aeropod. It's designed to be a much more aerodynamic 5.8 gigahertz FPV antenna, and that is going to sit underneath my model in front of the motor. And that hopefully will stay out the way. Inside, the little connector is there, and then using the flying lead, that can connect into the left-hand side into my video transmitter. And it's just a case of making off all the connections as per the diagram for the F722. So with it all connected, it looks a little bit like this. Now everything has fitted really nicely in here, but it has taken a little bit of work to get the cabling quite neat. And I've tried to make sure that there is just enough cabling that I can keep track of everything. The only cables I haven't cut are the cables for the servos. I've left a little loop of cable inside the two side pods and hopefully then if the wings are disconnected slightly or pop out of position it's not going to put too much strain relief on those individual cables. But I'm really pleased with the way that it's gone together and what I've done is I've also installed a second camera under the nose so that camera is going to be facing down and hopefully I can use the dual camera support on the F722 flight controller to flick between the primary camera looking forward and then when it's flying autonomously I have the option of flicking a switch on the radio and looking down through a small Phoenix 2 nano camera from Runcam which should give me a great view of the ground as I'm flying over it. So there you go, it's all together. So now it's ready to install iNav onto. So join me in the next two videos. If you know what you're doing with iNav, I'd skip those. They're really designed for beginners, but I show you every single step, uh, the little missteps that I make. And that process that I go through is the same, uh, no matter whether you're setting something like this up or a Bixler, an AXN floater, a Tundra, whatever it is, the process to set up iNav is the same. So I'll see you on the other side of those two videos where we'll go out and maiden it. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. 
check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.